Hello and welcome to Cabrillo National Monument, San Diego's only national park site. With this video we hope to introduce you to our facility, some of the resources and opportunities for activities that are available to the public. Hi, I'm Park Ranger Bonnie Phillips at Cabrillo National Monument. A good place to start here at the park is the Visitor Center. In the Visitor Center complex we also have the Cabrillo History Museum as well as the auditorium with several films that are shown throughout the day. Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo, our park's namesake, uh, was a Spanish explorer in the 16th century who came and was the first documented European to visit the area that we know now as San Diego. It opened the Pacific Ocean to exploration down the road. The Cabrillo Expedition's objectives were to find trade routes to the Orient, to places like China and India, to find trade goods such as spices and silk. Unfortunately, the expedition did not make it to the Orient and had to turn around uh, as they faced heavy seas around the California, Oregon coastline. If you come today to visit our lighthouse, the lighthouse was built in 1855 and it was one of eight lighthouses built along the California coastline. If you visit the first two stories of our lighthouse, you'll see uh, artifacts from the 1880s and explore what life was like living in the lighthouse and keeping that light lit at nighttime. There are two days out of the year where the top of the tower is open to the public, August 25th, which is the National Park Service holiday, and also November 15th, which is the anniversary of the lighting of the light. In 1891, the lighthouse was decommissioned and moved down to where it currently exists on Pelican Point, and it's called the New Point Loma Lighthouse. It was the dwelling, the house of the lighthouse keeper and her family. And since space was limited, they used every piece that they could, starting with the basement, which would be used for storage, uh, an interior staircase, which would bring you up into the kitchen and the parlor, and eventually up to the bedrooms and the lighthouse itself. Beyond that, we have our famous Whale Overlook, which gives you one of the finest views of the Pacific Ocean and when it's migration season for the gray whales, one of the best ways to see them swim by San Diego on their way down to the lagoons of Baja, California. Hi, I'm Ranger Debbie, and we're standing out here at the Whale Watch Overlook, and every year the Pacific gray whale migrates from the cool waters in Alaska to the warm waters in Baja, Mexico. There's 22,000 of gray whales that are passing right by here at Cabrillo National Monument, and January is a very good month to come view that. One location in the park you don't want to miss is the Rocky Intertidal. It's very rare habitat. Only 10 miles of Rocky Intertidal actually exist along the California coastline. And we have about one mile of it here at Cabrillo National Monument featuring lots of underwater animals. The great thing about it is you don't need a boat. You don't need uh, scuba gear, you can just walk down at a low tide day and see octopuses, sea hares, uh, nudibranchs, uh, lots of invertebrates, limpets, a uh, good variety of intertidal life uh, common for Southern California, especially being that these tide pools are one of the most protected tide pools. So everything in the tide pool stays here. Uh, all the rocks, sand, uh, everything is federally protected. Uh, and so that means when you come to visit, uh, when your kids come to visit and their kids' kids, everything should look the same or even better. Nothing leaves the park. It all stays here. The best time to visit the tide pools at Cabrillo National Monument is between October and really end of February. That's when we have our most extreme low tides during daytime hours. Uh, we recommend that you check a tide calendar before coming out to the park. And it's always best to visit at least one hour before the peak low tide time during the day. Some of the animals you might find here at the tide pools are the knobby blue sea star, octopus, lobster, and we have lots of sea anemones. All the animals in the tide pools can, for the most part, be touched very gently with one or two fingers, but they should all remain in place. 
Coming back down from the historic lighthouse, you'll encounter the Bayside Trail. On the Bayside Trail, you'll find a variety of plants and animals and a chance to see traffic going in and out of San Diego Bay. If you elect to go to the very bottom and back, it's two and a half miles round trip. It is not a loop and it is a peaceful and wonderful hike. It's also an opportunity to see birds. We have migratory birds that pass through our park around October, November, and April, May months. Within the park on the west side of the peninsula is mostly coastal sage scrub. They're what we call a drought deciduous community, meaning when we get our dry season, which is typically April through November, most of the plants will drop their leaves because that's the only way they can deal with that kind of drought. On the east side, it's a little more protected and, and a little more buffered, so we get southern maritime chaparral communities. They're similar and there's a lot of overlap, but on that side, the plants tend to keep their leaves year round uh, and they have various mechanisms of, of how to deal with drought. We are here in Battery Ashburn, which is a bunker that is open every fourth Saturday of the month here at Cabrillo National Monument from 10 a.m. until 4 p.m. And this is a great place to learn all about World War II and the history of, of the soldiers that were up here protecting our country. Uh, and it's also a wonderful place to watch the Pacific Gray Whale migrate. Observation Bunker is only open one day a month. But if you come down the hill and go to the Communications Bunker, that's open seven days a week. Every day the park is open, that will be open. We have a number of displays inside the communication bunker that put the harbor defenses in their context of their day and time. Uh, some information, there's even a real live 16 inch artillery shell there. And we frequently have a volunteer there to help explain any questions that you might have. Cabrillo National Monument, like all national park unions, is part of our national heritage. We encourage people to come and use our facilities to enjoy the experience. In addition to what we offer to the general public as a national park site, we also have a program that includes outreach to public school teachers and their students. Teachers interested in learning about the coastal sage ecology, California history, Tide pools should contact the interpretive division through the website of Cabrillo National Monument. Cabrillo National Monument is open seven days a week except for Christmas. Park hours are 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. and we look forward to seeing you out here.